MSNBC contributor Goldie Taylor um, was much more loquacious and eloquent than anybody else I know. She posted a remarkable response at thegrio.com. My initial instinct was to go all subterranean homesick blues and just put Goldie's piece on cue cards and have you read it while I shut up. Ultimately, we realized it would be smarter to just let her explain, let her tell it. We've never done this before. This is sort of a guest on air op-ed, uh, but I think this occasion calls for it. My grandmother used to start the story, show me your papers. That's what the police officer said to Major Blackard, her great-grandfather, when he was just 19 years old. Major dug into the trousers of his wallet, patted his jacket, but he couldn't find his billfold. Sir, I done left my wallet, he said. But before he could finish his sentence, the young man was posted against a brick wall, cuffed, and taken to the St. Louis City Jail. Unable to prove his identity, he would spend the next 21 days in a cramped, musty cell. That's where his older brother Matt found him. He had been beaten and was bloodied. Matt returned with Major's employer later that day, wallet and identification card in hand. They needed to post bond, and the police officer needed to see a white face. The year was 1899, and Major Blackard was my great-great-grandfather. The real crime was that Major Blackard was a man of color living in America in 1899. This morning, when I initially got, you know, the first notification that the president was having to produce his long-form birth certificate and passing it out, you know, by White House staffers, it recalled a really ugly time in history for me. It recalled a time when men of color, when black men specifically, weren't allowed on the street without identification. And here we are with a president of these United States, duly elected by the people of this America. He's being asked to produce his papers. And not just his birth certificate. They've gone on to ask for his college transcripts. Never in our 235 year history have we ever asked a president to prove that he was born on this American soil. Good morning. In a stunning show of unchecked ego, Donald Trump quickly hosted a press conference. He took credit for forcing our president to hand over his birth certificate. The sometime real estate developer, socialite, author, and television personality went on to caution onlookers to let the experts examine the documents as if the president were perpetrating a fraud. Trump didn't even want just the birth certificate. He wanted the president to release his college transcripts. His implication is that Barack Obama was the beneficiary of affirmative action and that he took the place of a more qualified white student. Apparently, graduating magna cum laude from the nation's most prestigious law school and being named editor of the Harvard Law Review, the institution's highest student honor, is just not enough for Trump. But you see, for people like Trump, it never is enough. If he gets on the phone or gets off his uh, basketball court, or whatever he's doing at the time. I mean, he should be focused on OPEC and getting those prices down. As if his place was better on the basketball court. When they tell you that this isn't racial, don't believe them. This controversy was constructed solely as a way to delegitimize the presidency of a black man. Those who question the location of Barack Obama's birth are clearly the same people who would pack up and move out of a neighborhood if somebody like me moved in next door. They are the same people who would believe African Americans are better suited on the basketball court than in a boardroom. When they say they want to take their country back, they mean from us. Goldie Taylor's full article in response to this presidential press conference today is posted at thegrio.com. Highly recommended. And thanks, Goldie, for doing our first ever guest op-ed. Now it's time. For